25, 75, 13%. Well, since the last video, I haven't done anything with the batteries. They are still sitting here in the garage, but I have turned off all the circuit breakers again because today we want to connect this one to our Powerwall 2.0 and charge up all three batteries from solar. Because one of the batteries is so low at 12%, we can also do a discharge test here and see if you put some load on this battery configuration, what will actually happen. Welcome back to the off -grid garage in sunny hot Australia. We had like 110 amps outside today, but now it is again fairly, um, fairly cloudy. It is around noontime at this beautiful weekend in the middle of the last winter month down here. And usually this is already enough that our solar here on the garage, carport and big shed is producing over six kilowatt peak. On top of that comes the tilt system as well. And we're already producing over 20 kilowatt hours a day again. So we are over the hump. We are out of the woods. This is all the energy I need. From now on, it gets only better. So let's see, um, at the moment I'm charging these two Mason batteries up here, but they should be... So I want to dis need to disconnect these ones here and then we can connect and then we can connect the Polo battery tower. All right, I have now disconnected the Mason batteries here and flicked the circuit breaker of the middle battery because this is the one with the highest state of charge. Because I always have to have both batteries in parallel for a while, otherwise um, my MPPT has no power and all this equipment has no power here. So for a short moment, both batteries need to be in parallel. And I've used the middle battery here because it has the highest state of charge and the voltage was closest to the Mason batteries. So we're having a quick look at the SPED calibration center. We are charging from solar with 426 watts. The state of charge is not correct because I have not plugged in. We still got the CAN communication to the Mason battery. Okay, disconnect this one. And we plug this one here into our Polo. And state of charge goes down to 37%. When you have a look at the SPED calibration center and you see these spikes going up and down all the time during the day, jumping from 24% all the way up to 80%, close to 100% and then down to 37 percent this is exactly why because i'm changing batteries all the time here doing more testing here for the channel for you guys and that's why the state of charge can change very quickly in a short amount of time all right so 37 percent this is our where are we here are we this is our average of all hang on so this is our average of all three batteries but i have only connected the circuit breaker for this one battery here at the moment so you can see this current here 12.8 amps is exactly what we measure here in the bms studio as well okay let's introduce pack number one as well of course we can see battery number two is now charging battery number one but we can also see these 7.5 amps here coming from our solar system at the moment are going into battery pack number one because this is the one with a lower state of charge. Even the voltage is um, almost the same between these two batteries. All the solar energy is now going into pack number one. So when we introduce pack number three now with the lowest state of charge ever, we probably see all the energy now shifting to pack number three. Let's try it. Okay, pack number three. It is charging with uh, 27 amps. 15 amps coming from battery 2, nothing from pack 1, and 12 amps coming from the solar. Voltage is 0 0.50, 0 0.56, 0 0.50. So this one is 6 millivolt higher only. That's why it is delivering a little bit of energy now. So what I want to do now is I want to introduce a load. I turn on the... Let's turn on the Phoenix inverter. So, and here we can see now the dynamic of such a system. We've got solar power, we've got three batteries with different state of charges, and we've got a 1.4 kilowatt load connected. Battery number one gets discharged with five amps. Battery number two, almost 18 amps coming out of this battery. Battery number three is actually getting charged with 4.9 amps. <laughs> okay, let me double the load. So two kilowatts we are pulling from the system and we can now see battery number three, which is our lowest in the in the pack, is not doing anything. Zero amps. It doesn't deliver any power or very little power only. The majority of power comes from pack number two, which is the highest state of charge battery. 
and some energy is coming from battery number one. The voltages are all the same. We've got like um, six millivolt deviation. Yeah, six millivolt deviation. And they figure out which battery delivers energy, which takes energy. They do this all the time permanently without you needing to do anything. And this is pretty much the same situation now as we had in the battery shelf as well, with the three different BMS connected in parallel to each other. And the battery is just, they figure it out. And at some stage, battery number three will just stop discharging because the voltage in this battery will start falling. But it can't. It's in parallel with all the other two batteries and they keep the voltage relatively stable. So at this certain voltage then, battery pack number three will just stop discharging. And it will wait for the other two batteries to come down. Obviously pack number one will follow soon. And then it's only up to pack number two to hold up the voltage and deliver all the power to our load. And until the time when all the batteries are at a lower state of charge. So they should be relatively close together at some stage. But here we are not going to wait for that to happen because we want to fully charge the battery and see what happens. So I'm lowering the load again to 1.2 kilowatts. I'm turning off the load. Okay, so we are now going to recharge the battery again from solar, eight amps coming in. And there's some dynamic going on. Here we've got negative nine. This one is discharging, this one is charging, and this one is charging as well. They are trying to catch up with battery number two. Oh, now even 29 amps, and we are charging a tiny bit into battery number two as well. Flat area of the curve, look at this. Okay guys, um, let's, um, let's uh, keep this all connected to the solar here, and I'll be back in probably two days or so, uh, when our battery here is fully charged, or at least the other two batteries have caught up to pack number two. And then we can explore a bit what is actually going to happen to pack number two, because this is our highest. I don't know how good these batteries are balanced. The, the first pack we have tested wasn't balanced that well. So I assume the other two packs are something similar. All right, guys, you have a wonderful time and we see us in a second. <laughs> Stupid. The next day. Interesting to see what the lights are doing on the front. So when they are flashing like this one and this one here, the battery is getting charged and discharged. And see, this one is only on standby, basically, but there's no gauge lights coming up. Well, this one is the middle one with 77% state of charge, no amps. 65, this gets charged, and 69, this gets charged as well now from solar. So we are slowly getting there. You can see just from one day charging how close they're coming together now. So all three batteries are flashing, they are charging. 73%, uh, 79, and 76. So they have actually caught up and balanced, or not balanced, equalized. So the bottom and top battery have now charged to almost the same level as the middle battery. Without us doing anything. I just love parallel batteries. It is so easy. The next day. So all the clouds are now gone and pure sunshine outside. And uh, 7.63, uh, almost 7 amps. And we can see pack number two is charging the slowest, while pack number three, which is the highest in state of charge, is charging with the highest current. And I thought something is not right. And now I know why. Because I have not calibrated these two here. So these state of charge may not be correct. Seplos advises to fully charge the batteries and then fully discharge them so the BMS actually knows what the actual capacity of your battery is. And I have not done this with uh, battery number two and three. Never. This is out of the box, turn on and charging. They may reset to 100% automatically. Well, we have to find out. The next day. 98.5. 98.5. Ninety-eight point five, and they're all three charging like champions here, so we can't be far off. The next day, I have come to the garage this morning just to find all three batteries sitting on hundred percent state of charge. I don't know what's going on here, but I can see here on the VRM it says um, ESS hashtag four, which is the BMS disable discharge, which is not correct. It should say BMS disables charging, right? Because we are full. You're not charging anymore. Let's have a look. 
Battery number one, cell over voltage protection. And we've got a deviation here of 132 millivolt. Pack number two has also a cell over voltage protection, which is our cell number seven here, 3.53 volts, 185 millivolt. And pack number three, cell over voltage protection, 188 millivolt. What is going on here? But it's good to see there are other cells balancing as well, number four and number seven here in this pack. Okay, let's have a look in the remote console. We can see all three battery modules are online, 300 out of 300 and number of modules blocking charge or discharge is zero. It should be three of them are blocking charging now, right? It should be three. Obviously, these information are not coming through to the Victron system correctly. Hmm. But here, a look into the um, parameters. 55.2 volt would be our charge voltage limit and then CCL sits on zero because they have all reached the cell over voltage protection and we can discharge with three times 80 amps, 240 amps. Okay, what I have to do now is I have to log in to every single battery module and change the recovery voltage for cell over voltage protection down to 3.55 or 3.6 or something. I can't believe we are charging to 55.2 volts only and all three packs are having a cell over voltage protection. This only, this only tells me that the pack is totally unbalanced. That is insane. Okay, let me log in and change these parameters here for every single pack. Okay, 3.6, upload. Okay, and alarm has cleared. And now, after all three have been cleared, we can see the charge current limit is going up again. So this should go back to 10 amps. Ah, because it's only one battery. Okay, let me put them back into the parallel. Okay. And let's go back into parallel mode. Start. One, two, third one always takes there it comes ah this one is again in cell over voltage protection this is why we can see only 10 amps here the charge current limit you can see 203 204 millivolt deviation here not even at 55 volts that is insanely high this one again 275 millivolt 135 there are some current going in the next day Okay, my friends, we are back. We are almost fully charged now with all three battery banks. I had actually an over voltage situation for pack number two and three because um, we never changed any parameters in these batteries. So they are factory default. And obviously these settings are not quite as um, optimal. So there was an over voltage situation. Both packs turned off. They both reset to 100%. But there is a bit of an inconsistency now between all the packs. What I will do now is I will copy all these um, parameter settings and switch settings from pack number one to pack number two and three as well. And this is something you can easily do here. So you set one of your packs as you want it with all the parameters 3.65, 2.5, here 55.2, 80, 80. We'll leave this all as it is. Yeah, and then we go the leaf blower. Really? And then we click on export file. Pack one, we call this one pack one. Save it. Okay. And now we have to connect to pack number two. System monitor. Stop. Start. Yep, this is our pack number two. We can see we've got a cell voltage alarm already and we are on 100%. And if we go into the parameter settings and click on read all, we will see um, different parameters in here. As we can see, this is now pack number two, totally untouched settings and function switches. We can see it down here, 57.6. This is the default value for our charge request voltage. So we want to click on file, select our pack number one settings, click on open, and we can already see this has gone down to 55.2. Now we have to write all these parameters back to the BMS. We can do this by clicking on set parameters. This will write all the information back to the BMS. 
There we go. And we do the same here for the function switches. All right, and if you click on read all now, we read the information back from the BMS and we can see we now have 55.2. So these are exactly the same settings now as in pack number one. I'll do the same for pack number three as well. And hopefully the blower is gone by then. Okay, we are now back in parallel mode. We have changed all the battery packs to the same parameters now and settings. This one has no warning. This one does over voltage alarm and this one has a high voltage alarm as well. So pack number two and three have a high voltage alarm while pack number one hasn't. And this also reflects in the CCL, which sits on 100 amps now. So 80 amps for the pack, which has no alarm and 10 amps each for the other packs, which have an alarm. Max 100 amps. All right, my friends, we are getting ready to fully charge our battery our first time here. Well, at least on camera now. So 18 millivolt pack number one. 52 in pack number two and 34. The voltage is the same, all batteries are in parallel, all have the same settings now. 99.6 they're all showing, so seems to be good. Okay, let's um, introduce our charger. Let's check the remote console, yep, 240 amps, 240 amps discharging. There's no limit and the charger is coming in, 850 watts, 1000. We're charging, seven, eight amps, 5 amps, 4 amps. So the alarm voltage for each of the battery packs sits on 3.444 volts. Because this time 16 makes a 55.1, I think. And then when we have 55.1 per pack for half an hour, it resets to 100%. This is one of the triggers. I doubt we will see this because one of the cells will peak before that and hit the over voltage protection. But um, let's see. So far we are still on 240 amps, so that means we haven't reached any cell hitting these uh, 3.44 volts, 3.37. Oh, we are close to hit 3.44 in this pack number two, 3.44, there we go, there we have it. So we should see a alarm, yep, we've got the red cell here, and we can already see the charge current limit is going down now. Pack number one is still under and pack number three is still under as well. So it's only pack number two at the moment, which is hitting the high voltage cell alarm at 54 volts. We've got a 109 millivolt deviation already and increasing very fast. So that's not good. So none of the three Polo battery packs were actually balanced, top balanced. We've got pack number three now as well. One cell over 3.44 volts. And pack number one is actually still our best of the three packs. But we are going to hit the 3.44 volts here as well very soon. And then we will have a current limit on all three battery packs, which results in a charge current limit of 30 amps only. So let's see. Oh, we are 3.62 volts. We are 250 millivolt deviation. Look at this. There we go, cell over voltage protection, charge current is on zero, charging with 13 amps. So that actually means the current limiter on the BMS is not kicking in at the moment. It is only requesting these 10 amps from the charger, but physically we allow all currents going into this battery. That is interesting. 3.65 we just hit, 230 millivolt deviation. So pack number two and three have an over voltage, a cell over voltage protection, while cell number one is still charging 3.6 volts. We are very close. Look at this shit. And bang. There we go, 3.6 volts. And then charge current limit goes to zero. And now the voltage is going in between 3.65 volts BMS turns off charging and then it slowly discharges to a 3.6 and then the charger kicks in again. So that's why we can see the current is going up and down all the time depending on the situation of any of the BMSs. And at this point we have the ESS uh, hashtag 4 again. BM BMS disables charging, not discharging, charging. 
The current you can see here between pack number three and one is just a balanced current between the packs. Yeah, because of the massive imbalance across all three battery packs here, we cannot really do any further testing here at this point of time. I'm only charging to 55.2 volts, which should be 3.45. But because of the high imbalance across all these battery packs here, 250 millivolt, we cannot charge any higher uh, before one of the cells hits the uh, cell over voltage protection and then the BMS turns off anyway. I was really hoping to see a bit more action here uh, in these battery packs, but they are hitting the 3.65 volts all the time. So what a shame. So let's uh, introduce some load. 650 watts of load now. And you can see this power is solely coming from the batteries. There's nothing coming from the solar system itself. Yeah, 10 amps charge current limit. So the solar is only producing 10 amps at the moment. Even, even the load is higher. And the rest of the power is coming from battery number one and battery number three now. Not from our solar. And I cannot find a way to turn off the current limiter when the battery is fully charged. Because this kicks in as soon as we have a cell high voltage alarm. Then the current limiter kicks in and requests only 10 amps for this battery. It is very hard to do some proper testing with these batteries here because they are so out of balance and they're hitting the 3.65 volts all the time and then turning off charging and here the charge current limit goes up and down all the time and it's really hard to predict what's going on. I probably have to install an active balancer to all of these three batteries here. Tap into the balance cables of the BMS and connect an active balancer. 10 amps here, 8 amps here, 0 amps there. But discharge MOSFET is on, so I don't understand why this battery is not discharging at all. Whenever I see one of the back battery packs jumping to 100% state of charge, I know there's a cell over voltage protection situation. 280 millivolt, I mean, come on! Here as well, 255 millivolt deviation we have. That is crazy. So actually pack number one, which we have tested before, is actually still the better one of the three almost one kilowatt for our load, only 500 coming from solar and the rest is coming from the batteries because, because the step loss BMS limits our charge current to 10 amps only. That is, it is not good. It is not good. We've got pure sunshine outside and solar should be able to handle all the load and also charge the battery and not discharge the battery. So it's not great. And the charge current limiter cannot be turned off. It is solely dependent on the cell high voltage alarm. As soon as this one comes along, it uh, limits the charge current to 10 amps for this battery pack. And requests this from the solar charge controller. Okay guys, I think so far this um, charging test for the three uh, Seplos Polo batteries here, it is a bit of a weird one because the, the, the packs are so out of balance and there are things happening which shouldn't happen at 55 volts or even under 55 volts. Look at this cell voltage here, 53.79 and this one is on 54.2, even they are in parallel. So obviously, even it says discharge MOSFET is on, it is not on because it is not discharging either. And it waits for some sort of timer or setting or something well, even if the cell over voltage protection goes away at 3.6 volts, it doesn't allow discharging any further. Now, for some reason, I've just written all the parameters and also function switches back to pack number two, but it is still not taking part in this game here. So if your battery, so as you can see, if your battery is not fully top balanced here, it's not great. It is not great. It is very inconsistent what you can see with the charging and discharging and which battery is being used at the moment. So I'm really thinking of getting three uh, 16S active balancers here and put this in the um, Polo batteries. And this should improve the situation a lot. Far more consistent charging and not this shit here anymore all the time. That is really frustrating. Not good. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support here on the channel. Thanks for all your beer donations here. It is getting warm and sunny outside again, so spare time is coming. And until the next video, guys, when we do something completely different again, 
you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. It is still not not taking part. I don't know what's going on. The Zeppelos Polo batteries in parallel, charging and discharging. I need to top balance them. <laughs> it's just, it's just,